1. Galatians chapter 6. Um, okay, let me save time. Let me read from verse 6. Galatians chapter 6 from verse number 6. I trust that the media people are ready. Uh, those who are projecting the scriptures. Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. That's very heavy. Whatsoever. Some say whatsoever. Whatsoever a man sows, he will also reap it. It is my prayer that we will continuously sow good seed through our lives, our character, we will continuously sow good seed. Your word is a seed. Your action is a seed. Your lifestyle is a seed. Seed is not only material things and financial things. In fact, when we talk about seed these days in the Christendom, what comes to mind is money. But all is not about money. Your lifestyle is a seed. Your character is a seed. The words you speak is a seed. Your attitude is a seed. And whatsoever a man sows, he will reap. I pray God help us to sow good seed in the mighty name of Jesus. Verse number 8. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. You're coming here today, are gathering together. Some of you have paid the price to travel from different parts to be here because you are sowing into the spirit. You are sowing into your spiritual life. You have come to receive the word. You have come to stay in God's presence. You have come to be imparted spiritually. You have come to be blessed spiritually. You are sowing a seed to your spiritual life. Can I hear amen? amen. And the Bible tells me if you sow into the spirit, you will reap what? Everlasting life. Not corruption, everlasting life. Hallelujah. Please, let's appreciate Reverend Isaac Omolei. Let's appreciate Daddy Omolei is in the house. I know he wouldn't even want me to break the protocol of preaching God's word, but let's give a nod to him and it's due. You're welcome, sir. So, if you sow into the spirit, you will reap everlasting life. If you sow into the flesh, you reap corruption. The corruption there means um, it will be corrupted. In other words, whatever you sow into the flesh has expired it. It will expire. It will die out. It will phase out. Now, example of sowing into the flesh, of course, apart from the works of the flesh, everybody knows that sowing into the work of the flesh, sin, fornication, adultery, stealing, cheating, lying, we all know that of course, you reap corruption. That one is not even corruption. You reap death. But again, when it says anyone who sows into the flesh, was he here I was talking, was he yesterday here or in the morning in our church in Sruliri? I was talking about the fact that no matter how many times you go for pedicure, how many times you go for facial lift, how many times you go for manicure, you go to the gym and build yourself, will it last forever? Talk to me. Will it last forever? Ah, it would change. Mr. Universe, the guy who used to be Mr. Universe about 25 years ago, I think they showed his picture recently. You know, those people who are muscle builders, he has shrunk. 25 years have come and gone. He cannot sustain those muscles, those build up. Now, a lot was sown into the flesh. But with time, corruption sets in. Corruption as in decay, as in it expires, as in it fizzles out. So what are you sowing into? Jesus said in John 6, 27, he says, labor not for the meat that perishes. He said, don't do all your investment, all your energy. Don't put it on the food, the meat, the stuff that expires. The word perishes there is the same category as expires 
all corruption. It is corrupted. It expires. It fades off. It goes out, fading away like the stars in the morning, losing their lights in the glorious sun. It fades out. So how much time are you spending in God's word? How much time are you spending in the place of worship, praying in the spirit? How much time are you spending in time of fellowship, consecration, meditation in God's word? How much time do you spend in reaching out to people, in missions work, in evangelism? If you sow into the spirit, you reap everlasting life. If you sow into the flesh, you reap corruption. It will expire. No matter how, how much you look beautiful today, and we keep telling you, or they keep telling you, uh, there's this vitamin that will renew you, re rejuvenate you. There's this aloe vera mixture that is in town now. In fact, there's this company in town now, they call them forever living or live forever. If you take their stuff, you will live forever. Fading away like the stars of the morning. It will expire. It will fizzle out. Labor not for the meat that perishes. John 6, 27 says, but for that which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give for him, God the Father has sealed. So how many want to sow into the Spirit? Let your desire your crave to sow into the things of the spirit, let it be stronger, let it be greater than your desire to sow into the things of the flesh. Amen. Paul said, though our outward man perishes, that's the greatest of all apostles. Greatest of all apostles. Our outward man perishes, but our inward man is renewed day by day. That's a man who understands the gravity of putting more in the spirit. Show me your library of books. Spiritual books. Books that teach on fantastic topics that will rejuvenate your spiritual life. Show me your library. Your Christian library. The library of books you have. I can easily tell if you are given to sowing to the spirit. Show me your schedule of prayer. Your schedule of prayer time, time of fellowship and meditation. I'm talking about personal, not corporate. Then I'll be able to tell you whether you're a man or woman who actually gives more time sowing into the spirit. You have no library, you have no books, Christian materials that you read, that rejuvenates you. You have no translation of the Bible. The only Bible you have probably is the one on phone. If you are still one of those Christians whose Bible is only electronic, without prejudice, I stand to be corrected. You still have more work to do. With this, some of us, at a, by the grace of God, I've been working with the Lord for three and, three and a half decades now. I'm still struggling to control the contest, the contention with this device. I'm down to earth telling you the truth. And you know, here, I come down to tell you the truth because so you don't see us as superhumans. So I said to my, I think one of my sons, biological sons, say if I, your father, I do my best to make sure these devices, these gadgets do not control my time. It's a struggle. I have to go extra mile to be disciplined about it. With my years of work with God. So I said, I'm afraid for you. Because you haven't worked with God like I have done. I'm talking to one of my biological sons. And that's why I'm hard on you when it comes to these things. He said, no, I know how to control my, I know I can control it. No, there's no problem about that. Uh -uh, uh -uh. At my level, I struggle with controlling it. And I said controlling it, I'm not saying that I don't pray, I don't study the word and all that. But it takes a lot of extra effort to be disciplined about it. So how many translations of Bible do you have? Where's your physical 
your hard copy Bible and how many translations of it do you have? How is your study? How is your library like? You don't have to, you don't have to be so rich to build a, a, a structure to have a library. But it can be in one box, even if you don't have money to keep the library. It can be one Ghana must go. We, we can point to that. Look at your books. Look at your library. Am I making any sense here? If you sow into the spirit, you reap everlasting life. If you sow into the flesh, it's corruption. It's corruption. And I want to buy Versace watch. And your spiritual library is empty. I want to buy the latest iPhone. And your catalog of books is not loaded. And of course, the tech companies are very wise. Every six months, a new version comes out. And then you run after it. Every six months. Lift your hands up to God. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, give me grace to sow into the spirit. In the name of Jesus. And everybody shout, Amen. amen. When we were, uh, without disrespect to technology, we appreciate technology and we'll still use it. We're engaging it. That's what we're using right now for transmission. Technology is good. Without disrespect to technology. But when we were growing up as believers, we had hard copy Bibles. I asked myself, when last did many of us do markings on our Bibles? And those things come as a result of intensive study. True or false? Intensive study. Highlighting pens, you mark. Those days, I didn't even have, we didn't have highlighting pens. It was, it was red biro, blue biro. We mark. We jot our comments. In fact, for some people, those days, their catalog of messages is in their Bible. Every small space, Abi Reverend Kotila, every small space, you are jotting something on it. You don't easily forget it. But today, the whole thing has changed. It has changed. Unfortunately, someone who was trying to preach, and this has happened to me before also. I made the mistake of going to a, a, a meeting. I went with my iPad. It was iPad 1 those days, the old iPad. And as I opened the iPad to start my teaching, the iPad crashed. Were you in that meeting with me? Or you were there? The iPad crashed. And I was on the altar saying, what do I do? But thanks be to God, over the years, the study of the word, the in-depth knowledge of the word, we can pull out of the wells that is on the inside. <laughs> the young man say, uploaded. <laughs> Hallelujah. So he crashed. And I looked at, and I had to announce to them, Ladies and gentlemen, the message I prepared is on my iPad. The Bible is there, but the system has crashed. I will attempt. That was the word I used. I will attempt to replicate what I have there because it's in me. And God helped me that day. I went back immediately. This was some years back. Immediately back to my hard copy Bible. Jot things there. Make my markings there. I'm sure that one cannot crash. Or can it crash? No, it won't crash. I pray for grace for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. So into the spirit. Increase your libraries. Your Christian libraries. Buy more books that will rejuvenate and revive you. Get more catalog of sound teachings and messages. Don't leave your spiritual growth to click and play pattern on social media. You click, swipe. We have arranged it with algorithm that churns out 
certain messages to push. Let me ask you. Some of the things you watch on social media, did you request for them? No. It just, they come next, it comes next, it comes. And Satan knows how to do those manipulations. And then you start feeding on stuff that I call Jezebel's food. Jezebel's food. And those who eat of that food, they never recover, they, they hardly recover from it. And that was what Jesus was saying. He said, you allow that woman who calls herself prophetess, her name Jezebel, to teach, to teach my servants and to seduce my servants. Jezebel's teachings, false doctrines. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Finally, on this charge, verse number nine. And let us not be weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Let me tell your neighbor, say do not be weary. The spirit and the arrow of weariness, the devil is firing that arrow in the times in which we live, these times, discouragement. People are worn out. People are tired, including people who are tired of church. Did I make sense here? People are tired of church. Disappointments from the pulpit. Expectation dashed by people who are supposed to be custodians of the oracles of God. I was in evangelism, I think three weeks ago, in Manchester City Center. So I walked to a few people who were sitting around the square in the city center. I began, preached to the first person. And he said to me, I don't want to hear what you want to say. No, no, no. First of all, I gave him a track. He said, what's he about? I said, about Jesus Christ and that he loves you. He said, keep that trash. So I said, no, Jesus loves you. He said, then you should preach that first to your priest and your clergy. I said, what do you mean? And he started to talk. He's a Caucasian. And with evidence, he was talking and talking about the rape issue, the same-sex thing, how members of his family has gone through experience where they've been raped by those in the order of clergy. How do I defend that? So I had to say to him, um, I am sorry about that, but you must understand that out of every, you know, one of the consolations is out of every 12 disciples, there's always a, a Judas. They said they've had enough of that. I said, so, so he kept on arguing, but I was also ashamed. I didn't know how to push through. But I managed to preach to him anyway. So the point I'm saying now is that there's weariness. People are weary. Tired. There's, there are conflicting sermons. This man comes today and says this. Another one. And these are highly respected people in the order of the clergy. And people are becoming weary. Members are becoming weary. Clergy becoming weary. New converts are becoming weary. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May God heal every weariness here today. I say God will heal every weariness here today. In the mighty name of Jesus. When the ten virgins, yesterday when I was talking, the ten virgins, the Bible said, while the bridegroom delayed, they all slumbered and did what? And did what? They all slept. So I asked myself, the wise and the foolish, everybody did what? Slept. And I began to check the meaning, the expression, the exegesis of the word slept. They all slept. And I came to a conclusion. By my understanding. They all became weary. They were worn out. They became tired. I think we're in that season. Lots of weariness. Mommy Omolei and Daddy Omolei. 
were with us in Lagos a couple of weeks ago. And we had this privilege of doing with them a broadcast. Some of you must, must have watched it. Yeah? We had this privilege of doing a broadcast. And they told the story of a, a believer who was supposed to do a Sunday school teaching or follow-up lesson for a young lady who just got converted. And during follow-up process, the young lady was impregnated. Became pregnant. Was impregnated by the fellow who was told to follow her up. One week or two weeks or within that same month. So the first exposure the lady had in the Christian dome was a brother impregnating her. That will leave an indelible mark. And that constitutes and contributes to weariness that is ongoing right now. So many anomalies. But there are people who make things right and you are the people. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will use us as instrument to reverse the wrongs. To right all the wrongs. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm here to challenge you and to encourage you. Don't be weary. The bridegroom comment, the ten virgins have all slumbered, but there's an air out to wake them up and say, wake up, the bridegroom is coming. Shall we rise upon our feet? Wake up, the bridegroom is coming. Wake up from weariness. Wake up from slumber. The bridegroom is coming. Father God, we want to thank you. We want to give you praise and glory and honor. Lord, we want to thank you this evening for your word. We ask for grace not to be weary. We ask for grace to sow into the spirit. We ask for grace, Lord, to be more intimate with you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We hear the sound, the herald, the cry, the bridegroom comment. Lord, wake us up from weariness. Wake us up from tiredness. In the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for healing for your people. Everyone under the sound of my voice. Who is weary? Who is tired? Who is about to throw in the towel? Who has almost given up because of the attitude of some brothers or sisters in church? Those who are saying, Lord, I am tired. It could even be those who are saying, I am tired because of the financial circumstances they find themselves in. It could even be those who are weary because they are not able to meet with bills, expenses, to pay bills. Oh, my Father, I pray today, renew their strength. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask that the God of heaven will turn every form of weariness to strength in you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare you shall not be weary. I declare you will not be weary. He says, let us not be weary of well-doing. Don't be worn out. Don't be tired of well-doing. I pray in the name of Jesus, the grace for strength, the power for supernatural strength be released upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that God will give every one of us yearning, desire, hunger to sow into the spirit. God help us to increase the volume of time we we'll spend in your presence. Help us to increase the volume of time we spend in fellowship with you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ.